Out of all Alexander Dumas novels, Queen Margot is probably not the first title that comes to mind when mentioning legendary author. But when it comes to his book's screen adaptations, which are also plenty, this 1994 French, German, Italian, disturbingly unapologetic film, and I mean it in an admirable way, one scene will stick with you for the rest of your life. Hey, I'm Robin, I love history, but I'm bad at watching movies. So here we talk about historical film and TV. True story, when I first saw this movie was 30 years ago, and when I just rewatched it for the sake of this video, I realized that it still holds the same grip on me. The stage is set during the French Wars of Religion, and the events kick off with a notorious wedding on August 18th, 1572, between Catholic Marguerite de Valois, or better known as Margot, and a prominent Huguenot Henry, King of Navarre, from the House of Bourbon. The lovely event was organized by Margot's mother, Catherine de Medici, who had intentions on bringing both fighting sides closer together to cool off their religious disputes. Or did she? Fun fact, when Henry's mother arrived in Paris to buy clothes for the wedding, she suddenly fell ill after one of her shopping trips and died one month prior to the ceremony at the age of 43. Later, Huguenot writers accused Catherine of murdering her using poisonous gloves, but nothing has been proven. Who knows? One of the things the film does absolutely remarkably is right off the bat evoking this profound feeling of inevitable conflict without even letting us to pick the sides yet. It basically throws all the characters at us at the same time, but it does in such an amusing way that watching them growl and bark at each other is a pure joy. On the Catholic side, we have Queen Mother with four out of her seven surviving children. She had ten in total, by the way, with King Charles IX leading the way. and. On the Protestant side, we have pretty much everyone dressed in black and white, blindly following their leaders, King Henry of Navarre and Admiral de Coligny, into a wolf's den. Catherine de Medici here is written as a powerful, manipulative, multidimensional antagonist and a pretty toxic mother who drives the story exactly where it needs to go, but who doesn't have all of the puppet strings, which leaves plenty of room for life on screen to just happen. There is, however, a notion that Dumas might have been influenced by propaganda against Catherine, because it's not proven that she was the one who ordered the assault on Admiral de Coligny, the very incident that provoked St. Bartholomew's Day massacre. In fact, history offers us three possible candidates behind that assassination attempt. The massacre is the big action-y climax of the film, except it happens even before its half runtime, putting it kind of close to the five-act structure of a classical play. Luckily, it's not the main point or even the focus here. This big epic drama doesn't need big battles to impress. Now, don't get me wrong, there's still plenty of action here, driven by both political and personal reasons, that is constantly weaving in and out of a tragic romance and a fateful bromance, but personally, for me, this film always have been about the change of heart and managing to coexist with your very dysfunctional and openly kinky family with clear favoritism and a disgust to anyone they deem not worthy. The movie makes sure you feel like an insider, not just an observer, to the point at times of kind of uncomfortable intimacy. It thrives on close-ups and a very well-positioned medium shots with a clever use of lighting that emphasize drama while still painting a good overall picture. Of course, it puts a tremendous pressure on the cast who are, for the lack of a better word, perfect. The hardest lot, in my opinion, falls on Jean Guyanglat, who plays anxious, pressured, and often traumatized King Charles IX. I want to say my favorite, even though Isabella Gianni as Margot is just excellent. And hot. Just for kicks, let's talk a little bit about shock value of Queen Margot as genre's representation. I claim that this is the first historical fiction that pushed the boundaries of what can be shown on screen. And even later, the glorious HBO of Rome merely just picked up the flag. And don't get me started on famous for that medievally influenced fantasy Game of Thrones, except please do, think about it. Saint Bartholomew's Day Massacre is basically the Red Wedding, only on much, much bigger scale. In Paris alone, the body count was placed on 5,000 plus, with the aftermath in nearby provinces later 
almost quadrupling, actually more than quadrupling that number. One of the Queen Margot's protagonists that should be running around imposing some sort of justice by film and TV standards of the time shares the same fate with Ned Stark. House Lannister has nothing that rotting from the inside the House of Valois can't offer, and Cersei can easily take the masterclass from Catherine de' Medici on how to deal with her enemies. Hell, the movie even has a wonderfully shot wild boar hunt that pretty much serves the same purpose as Robert Baratheon incident. No big statement here, just an observation. Fun fact, the hunting book featured in the film is correlated to the book King Charles IX wrote himself, being a huge fan of this royal pastime. It was first published in 1625, uh, long after his death, but still remains a very valuable source for those interested in the history of hounds and hunting. Now, in all seriousness, besides all this groundbreaking courageousness, Queen Margot is rightfully considered one of the most important and influential French films of the 1990s, and it can literally strike almost any chord you fancy, be it intrigue, politics, drama, romance, action, sexuality, feminism, good lessons on history, or just simply a great filmmaking. One of the best additions to Dumas' universe on screen, it is structured, produced and presented in such a way that it just feels like an unforgettable Shakespearean tragedy. It basically is Dumas dressed as Shakespeare. Thanks so much for sticking around and I'll see you in the next one.